Hello, hello. Welcome to the Eddie Conversation Podcast. My name is Eddie V. Hill and I am your host. This is episode number 76. Joining me today is the one and only Ansley Hutchinson. Oh my God. What an honor to just be here with our fans and live audience. Yes, it's wonderful. It's great that we told the live audience to stay no, very don't quiet. React. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no clapping. No, I thank you in the corner, but the, seriously, stop. stop. Can we get them out of there? Yes, we can. I'm just smiling at a guy over there. All right, yeah, you got. It. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. Yep, I'll <laughs> add some screaming people. In the, <laughs> yeah. This guy's been taken added out. in post. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All right, Ansley. All right, Eddie. Uh, for starters here, let's just reintroduce you. All right. To people. Um, you are an actor. That is correct. Although my parents would disagree. Okay, go on. Oh, no, that was kind of a joke. Um, but that's just, that's just an okay, act. Yeah, I guess yeah, I, it's I, an I get actor it, joke. I, get okay. I, guess, I guess what I mean is if you... Uh, in order. How <clears throat> you're an actor. That's correct. Should we add anything else onto that, or you are, do you consider yourself a social media influencer at this point? Or like, uh, gross. Like no, but also kind of yeah. Like it, when I deleted my first account and had to completely start over, like and then you amass the same amount of followers again without effort. I think you just have to kind of accepted at that point that i do do social media yeah but it's i mean at the same time i guess maybe that has a, i don't know if there's a at the same time are we aren't we all expected to kind of just do social, do media? social media so is it i don't know if it could be a a, def, a, de, a defining uh, characteristic yeah, of yeah, me yeah, yeah i would agree okay i would agree i think it's just something that i ended up doing yeah. And, like, even then, it's still, like, on and off, you know. So, for the viewers, <laughs> uh, I do TikTok a little bit. Um, some videos do well, like a video of me shooting flies with a salt gun. That did well recently. Uh, I act sometimes when I'm gifted the opportunity to. And uh, I am a server <laughs> in every other aspect of life. And I'm young, broke, and in my 20s, and we're making it work in L.A. Yes, we're in Los Angeles, California. Yes, indeed. I'll also throw on. Um, I was just gonna throw out random. Let's can we do a random list of yeah. other abilities you have? Yeah. Uh, I'll just say I'll just can I say singing? Yeah, I can sing. Do you write? I do. Okay. Yes. And what else? Not dancing. Uh, <laughs> Draw the line of dancing. Okay. No dancing. None. Um, I can. This is my resume. Horseback riding? Uh, no, kickboxing, yes. Um, basic Ac sword fighting I can do. Accents in your repertoire? So many. English, British, yeah. Scottish. Yes. Uh, uh, here's the thing. So like, Southern. Sorry. So like, Canadian. I can't do Canadian. Is that even an accent? I don't they know. They say a boot. No, they don't. Um, no, like accents, yeah. But if I'm thinking about them, then I can't do them. Like they have to, it's in like a mental thing for me recently. It's never something I've struggled with before, but now I'm like hyper aware of it. So how does that work if uh, it calls for a character? Uh, excellent question, Eddie. Thank you so much for asking. Um, <laughs> haven't been faced with it yet. The only accents I've had to do are like simple Southern for things if needed. And, and other times I like I oh I did a I did a take the other day because when I get like little baby takes uh, or auditions where I had two lines okay and I did two takes completely different and then the third I was like screw it and I just went an aggressive Australian and I was like hi there how are you today <laughs> just like really over the top but like that was fun I didn't have to worry about it yeah I think my intellectual blocks me a lot of the time and that's what I'm trying to hint at here. I understand. But like, if you want me to, like, I can do basic British. I say basic British very loosely because people are mean about it. Um, I think I can do Irish, but it's up in the air because sometimes people think my Irish is Scottish and people think my Scottish is Irish. So I don't know at this point. I'm confused. Um, I can 
kind of do French, but apparently I sound like a Spaniard speaking with a French accent. <laughs> I can do Australian, but it apparently also sounds like New Zealand. Uh, and then I can do Russian. I, apparently I sound like Gru when I do that. And then okay. I can do Southern. So you're basing your feedback on the comment TikTok, section? TikTok, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just great. whatever I hear from I them. Just, okay, just want to clarify that because it's not like you're you're in a room with a... Um, that is correct. A, uh, what's it called? Like, what's an accent specialist? A dialect Yes, a coach. dialect coach yeah. where they're like, okay, Ansley, well, we're a little bit... We're a little bit... You're a little lean into the left there, gal. Yeah, so that's is not the case. All right, so we don't know... We haven't... That's not a true diagnosis that is correct it is just the internet diagnosis of my heavily unreliable thank you correct. for saying that that makes me feel a little bit better because I... I think my accents are decent and i know they're decent-ish yeah <laughs> because yeah. i've they're, fooled some people they're fully committed accents thank whether you. whether or not they're correct is another is... <laughs> there's something it's something okay. they're definitely an accent so let's let's begin yes i just want to talk a little bit about our experiences with a recent um screening event um we put on a kind of like a, a uh we showcased a feature film called trauma days, trauma days. and you star in that movie and it was a fun. It, w- it was a private cast and crew screening event here in Los Angeles for With the a few for th- friends. Yes, for the yeah cast crew and friends. friends. Private. Private screening. again. Um, not seen by yeah, the yeah, public. Yeah. Yes, we wanted to uh, celebrate together and watch it on the big screen in a nice in a nice theater experience with the seats and, and friends and it was love. It was a lovely time. It was really cool. Yes. Yeah, so, so congrats to you on that. That was. Thank you. I'm, I'm, what was that like? That was one of my questions. I was going to ask you first. Well, okay, wanna, okay, or, okay. Yeah. How did you? I want to. Yeah. How did? How was it for you? Um, it was amazing. I. I mean, everybody in the cast and crew had. had I feel like we all have such very fond memories of. Chama and filming in Chama and I only got to be there for about three days out of the whole process of the three weeks uh it was an amazing time for me I mean I I like I I have like I love New Mexico now and I'm I'm like heart heart Chama and people are like did you grow up there I'm like no (laughs) like just love one little city in it um it was just it was just amazing to see like the product of all the hard work that like the crew really put into it and all the editing and it was so clean Like, it was such a good movie. And all of my friends that went and watched it, there was two of them, um, they were like, yeah, I I didn't expect it to be that good. Like, I don't know what people expected when I said, yeah, we're going to go watch a movie that I was in, private screening. I think they expected it to be a bit, I don't know, like, lower quality than it was. But, like, they, they loved the acting. They loved the story. There were so many questions people had. And I was like, honestly, I don't know. I don't know how to answer these. That's what we tell them to say at the press junkets is you got to play it a little bit coy. Yeah. Um, I'm really good <laughs> at it. actually. <laughs> but it was, I mean, it was personally, it was very surreal to kind of see my face up on this like big screen. Uh, I don't know. How was it seeing your face on the big screen with the addition of knowing other people are watching at the same time your big face oh my big face (laughs) (laughs) your huge massive just dome well it's it's the screen yeah not not you i thank you it's very flattering um no i i surprisingly i just okay if it were more of an emotional role like if i had spencer's role and I had to be like in the woods, shoving my face in dirt, acting nuts, crazy. I think I would have been a little more scared. But I think Petunia was such an easy slip in that it felt like it was just me talking on camera. Like it just felt like me. And I'm like, well, I know I kind of do well with the public, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, the only thing that did kind of rack my nerves was like, what if people don't find it funny? What if people don't like the beats? You know, there's always that little bit of fear that maybe I didn't sell it. Maybe I didn't really commit, but I don't think that really came across. I I, I quite enjoyed it. And also my role in the movie wasn't massive. So it was like I got to enjoy my scenes when they came on. And I was like, okay, cool. Now I can watch the rest of the movie. Because like I knew when I was coming up. So I didn't have to worry about it. (laughs) I didn't have to worry about it. But yeah, it it wasn't scary. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I I think think you're... 
what did the audience give the proper reactions during your uh, so the, uh, i could have done for some bigger laughs if we're being honest <laughs> well you know we get the small it's, you know yeah yeah no um yeah i think i think so i mean i got feedback from some people that were there afterwards and they were very complimentary and that was that's always just great kind of to hear because you never know i, I don't really get validation that much so i was like <laughs> it's, it's kind of noise um but yeah okay did I answer the question? I don't even remember what yeah, you just asked Yeah, I asked, did, did, the, did the moments hit? And I it, think so. Is sound, yeah, because you initially stated that you were, I think you were so. worried that maybe people wouldn't laugh or you maybe missed it. But I, I'm assuming, I, th- I think they... I think they I did. think just the like relationship and chemistry between me and Spencer, me being his cousin and him being my older cousin, Like I think that was just, that was fun to watch for me. I, I quite enjoyed that. So, I don't know. I think that sold. I no, think people liked it. It was lovely. Lo- uh, yeah, it was... Uh, Look, I, I, good on you. Yes. Jeez, it's not me. It's you. Um, <laughs> and you wrote the characters. You <laughs> you yeah, wrote yeah, us. Yeah, yeah I co-wrote. Um, yeah. Okay, no, I wanted to ask, like, okay, okay, so was that the first time you've ever premiered two films? I mean, obviously two films, but is that the first time you've seen your work in its entirety on a massive screen like that? That's the first time I've seen my work on a massive screen like that that I tried hard on. I, I've I, like I've made short films in Reno that I've screened on in festivals before. So right. I've been in I've been in rooms in which I've watched my stuff with other people, but this was a little bit different because it's been such a long time since I have done that. Right. And like my first feature, it's what's on the inside. Was a uh, fin with post finished in like peak pandemic, so screening it publicly in a room was not people going to happen. Was not on the table at all. Yeah. So this was kind of like the first opportunity to do it since moving to Los Angeles. That was kind of cool. That was nice. It was cool. That was nice. Did you feel in the same way that you kind of asked me? Did you kind of feel that pressure of oh my god, there's a room full of people watching my movie? Like, what's that like as the director? Um, for me, it is... <clears throat> okay, so like... Oh, okay. <clears throat> it's a... I'm thinking about in the moment, similar to... Like, I was very confident in both pieces. We had a we had a short film called Sojourn Go Up First. That one was made this year, just like a few months ago. Um, and that one is kind of, I feel like it's, it feels like a by the numbers kind of like straight drama piece. It's, it's like, okay, we know what it is and we know what it's going to do. It's not going to, it's not like an audience reaction piece. You're not going to get like, it's just, it, it was, that one was hard to kind of gauge. I'm like, are people feeling anything? I can't tell. But if I felt confident what was on the screen, that was good. All that. And then when the, when Chama Days came up, I've been through so much on that movie already. I've been living with that for like a year and a half in post-production. So I've watched it like, I watched it a million times. And I, for, I've, my thing was like the working on the score for that movie was tricky because we were leaning in such like a dark, dark sounds and dark tones and ominous and unsettling. And when I watch it, I'm like, I don't know if this is funny anymore. Are people going to get confused? It was indeed funny. <laughs> Are people gonna get confused on on the comedy part? Was was like my biggest thing going in, but then people were laughing right away. So was, that kind of that, that was nice. And that's a credit to Risa and Spencer. Their comedic timing was just impeccable. I mean, like that is what I heard most from people was that they were like, I didn't expect it to be that funny, but the story was engaging, and it was kind of like a joking, scary movie. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. I don't know. It wasn't like scary movie five or something like that like it was a good story it was also just funny (laughs) so (laughs) yes so it's it's hard to describe and define but uh um i mine was like a roller coaster experience because there are moments in the movie i don't know that that i that i was um less confident in so like when similar to like you you knew your moment was coming up like i knew what you, I'm yeah. like okay. I'm like this part is coming up that I don't even like anymore, <laughs> or that I'm really worried that it's going to confuse people and it's just going to lose people. 
Like I kind of felt that in the room sometimes, but I don't know if I was projecting it. I'm like, I think that was projecting Eddie. So I'm like, this thing happened, and I'm like, oh no, the audience is lost. Quick, Spencer, make them laugh. <laughs> Save it with a joke. Well, and because the- <laughs> <laughs> Roman, Roman and I were talking, and he's like, oh, I want this. Like this is and just take this as you will that he was like this kind of to me is a 24 film worthy like he was saying i want this to get picked up he said i absolutely and and my boyfriend is like a cinephile like he'll watch anything he he has so many opinions about so many movies and he was like yeah i could see this going to sundance i think this will do well i mean he just had really high regard for it and he he's not kind if he doesn't like things so you you pleased a hard one to please great well yeah yeah lovely <laughs> great okay okay <laughs> that's all i got for yeah, i don't know yeah, for uh, yeah, days. yeah yeah because yeah, i mean the movie is not out yet we you just said we can want to spoil too we, much we've just well we don't i don't want to talk too much about it without people no, no whatever. yeah they'll lose interest all right <laughs> sorry <laughs> so uh, it was a lovely time yes um and it's now submitted to we'll we'll see we'll see what happens in the film festival process. This is this is this is that. Hopefully good things. And then in the meantime what we can prep okay, this is me talking about what I'm prepping for is I want to I wanna I kinda wanna let's just say, hypothetically speaking, this thing gets accepted into the big into a big boy, like a Sundance or a South by or Southwest a, or yeah. like a Berlin or a, you know, or whatever. <laughs> And then the and the, the festival, you know, they it's you you got to play the part a little bit, if you will. Like you got you want you want to dress the red carpet. You want to there's the photographing. There's the like you're being considered for for like a you know a best actor nom or you know there's the people want to when you show up, you can't just be in like just jeans and a tee. You have to you have to. I'm t- like I want to, I want to, I need, I need, I need a tire to look like a director at a film festival red carpet event. It's, okay. it's something that I'm prepping for mentally right now, right? And financially, <laughs> Eddie, you can like literally go to a thrift shop and find something that's like is fitted to you. It's gotta look you. good. It's gotta look okay, good. Okay, thrift shops look, have good stuff. It's gotta look me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that either, man. Like. I like navy blue dresses are kind of just my go-to. That's just like what I. That's what I wear to my, to my red carpet. I just quite literally put on a navy blue dress and said, "Awesome." Yeah. I look good. Yes. That's it. I haven't done that yet, so. <laughs> well, just uh, wear something I'm, you're I'm comfortable in. I'm looking forward to. Because like you don't want to feel awkward. Don't wear a beanie though, Eddie. <laughs> I'm not gonna wear a beanie. You strike me as someone who would wear a beanie. No, I I ditched the beanie in Reno. <laughs> I ditched the beanie in Reno. okay um okay i have a question i have an answer this i'm sure okay just to clarify you have been on the podcast before i have indeed feel free to after you listen to this one to travel back in time to episode 22 i believe it was wow 50 episodes ago and um, see, see, compare, compare, contrast answers from then to now. Oh the question today <clears throat> is why acting? And yeah, that's the, that's the question. <laughs> Open ended, broad to start. So it's funny because when we did this the first time, I was a senior in college, and I was like, I mean, you can see the energy difference from then to now. I can just feel it. Um, but why acting? It's just it's, when it comes down to it, there is still quite literally nothing else I think I could do. I think there's a lot of things I'd be mediocre at. I could be a teacher, but I'd get bored. I could be a writer, but I don't know how to finish books. Like There's a lot of things I could do. But when it comes to storytelling in and of itself, it is it is the one thing that I find constantly challenging and engaging. And I love it. I love it and I love that it is hard, it's challenging. Like I love being in classes and I love getting frustrated at myself because I didn't hit this scene the way I wanted it to. Cause I love knowing that I have to grow and there's a lot of room for growth. And I like knowing that this is a craft that never ever gets stagnant. You always have to keep learning and trying. And so I don't know, for me acting's like the only thing that I think would hold my interest. But also I think it's the only thing that I could devote the rest of my life to whatever that looks like and it's hard because this industry is hard but when i break it down 
a lot of us are creatives who have the same passion and we're in it just to do it. Doesn't matter what comes from it. We're just here to do it. And I think genuinely, if the rest of my life, I'm just working with my friends on their movies, their projects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I could do that because that is fulfilling to me. And that is soul searching. I love it. So if I'm in classes and I'm working on projects, it really doesn't matter. Just want to be doing it. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Let's talk about uh, the, I don't know. I don't know. I just I kind of want to get an update, or I, cause I I don't know. We talk, so I know I know stuff. Yeah, yeah, so but I'm they try- don't. So pretend yes, you don't okay. know me. <laughs> so Ansley, you Eddie. mentioned that the industry is hard. What do you mean by that? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> like what have you been going through lately? Like, cause I know. Okay, yeah, you've okay. Mm-hmm. So it's it's one of those. It's like okay, every actor kind of knows that there's a lot of rejection in this industry. I knew that going into it. You never expect it to come as quickly as it does. But I think the hardest thing I have had to kind of wrap my head around is the never hearing anything at all aspect. And also, consequently, when you do hear something back, it's always along the lines of, you do amazing work. I'd love to work with you. But So it's it's just constantly like, there's all these little carrots dangled in your face all the time. And Regardless, I'm going to put in the work. Like, I've gotten auditions that I don't love. I've gotten scenes I don't love. There's, like, I did a commercial once, a commercial audition, and I was like, this is so stupid. And I constantly find myself having to take my pride and just, like, put it on the floor and be like, these aren't the stories I want to be telling, and I don't feel like this is reflective of the education that I've gotten and the effort that I can put in. But at the end of the day, not every project you get is going to be one that challenges you or uses you or... So it's just, you have to wrap your... Or fulfills, yeah. Or fulfills you. So it's one of those things of like, okay, are you okay with not getting work? And are you okay that if you do get work, it's not going to look anything like what you want? And are you okay with playing this long game knowing it may never look successful in the way that you thought it would? And also, just a small thing, but Hollywood belongs to the same inner circle of people. And unless you can break into that inner circle, you're constantly just going to be like riding on the outskirts. And some people get lucky and have amazing success stories and love to see it. Love it. Mm -mm -mm. Tasty. But most of the time, like, it's just people who knew people who knew people. Mm -hmm. And that's why these stories are being told by these people. Sure. If that, without like ragging on it too hard. So are you, so that's a little bit of expectation talking there, right? Is, is that, is that what you're referring, or or you bring up the central core Hollywood people because like the breaking, the breaking in aspect. And that's, and that's, that's not to like complain about it. Like this industry is hard. Well, cause you're right. Cause the goal, the goal is, this is just to state the goal out loud. The goal is to break in and and be and like be like is to. The yeah. goal is to to tell stories in any capacity. Okay. It would be nice if you could also do that and get paid good money to do that, yeah. and maybe get like flown to Ireland every once in a while to tell those stories. Like it would just be cool to Ireland or. On the blue ocean sea on a ship, right? And that's, that's the other dream. Yeah. My God, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So it's, that... it's just mentally hard, I guess, is a better way of putting it. I could do this forever. It's still mentally very hard. I don't know how else to say that. Okay, good. <laughs> good. All right. That was my question, the why acting. And then that was the why was it hard? And that was your answer. Okay. There were two questions there. I didn't just talk all that time. Was there two questions? <laughs> yeah, because uh, then you asked me, okay, you were like, sorry. Yeah, yeah. what I'm, makes it I'm hard? I'm not trying to, I'm not criticizing your... Okay. No, I didn't think you were. I just got insecure for a second and I wanted to reestablish. Okay. I'm going to use this maybe a little bit as a, a therapy session for myself. Awesome. If I may. I love giving advice. So let's talk about why directing. Okay. Uh, it's similar to acting in the ways that you stated where, um, I mean, I think maybe every freelance art position has this involved, but there's rejection where you're, you're trying to, you're trying to climb ladders. You're trying to prove yourself. You're, you're putting creative ideas out there. They're getting shot down. 
as a director trying to similarly put yourself out there and put your voice out there it's scary and i'm thinking about the thing that i've been <laughs> the thing that is newer to this in my brain is like being that trauma days is done and now it's time for the external validation portion of the process where it's like all right you put it out there and people have thoughts about everything People have thoughts about how the actors act, how the score sounds, how the sound design sounds, how the editing went, how the writing was, how the pacing, the flow, the feel, the vibe, the... the all the descriptive words all, that come all of from the creative above. projects, yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. the thing that I'm struggling with currently is the question of what makes a project like completed like what when is it done and ready to move out for the external validation it's funny because the amount of times i have like called people and just vented about kind of this exact thing and they hit me back with the question well what does success look like to you and can you maybe reprime what that is supposed to be because for me, it used to be like, yeah, my face on like big screens all over, maybe on the side of a bus. Everybody knows who I am kind of thing. That was, you know, naivety. That was, that was success. Okay. That was success in the world of storytelling. But now I had to rephrase that because as I get older, I feel like the chances of that happening are slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. And I don't want to get to a spot in my life where I feel that I wasted it because I didn't achieve the success that I thought I would. And so for you, your sort of validation might have to come down to the fact that you did it. Like you did the damn thing. You created the movie. It's beautiful. It's well shot. It's gorgeous. Everyone that watched it enjoyed it. And even though we have to wait until it is getting into festivals, because it will, it, that validation needs to come from the fact that you united an entire cast and crew who believes in a project that you believed in. And we did it because you believed in it. We stand with you on that. Yes. You may not get the external validation you're looking for yet, but you know that it's coming. Well, yeah, we, we don't know. We don't know what this is going to pan out for. Okay, so I, let, me, let, me, let me maybe take it back a little bit here. I had some thoughts while you were saying that, and I'm forgetting what they are now. But I'll say a thing that I do remember. Um, fear. Okay, there's a step, there's a, there's, there's pro the process is write the movie, shoot the movie, edit the movie. And then for me, the way that I've normally thought about it is if I'm enjoying it and I'm happy with it, then that's kind of how I know. I'm like, okay, sweet. Like, I'm laughing. I'm having a good time. I love the performances. I'm happy with the takes we chose. And then you have to kind of like quantify in too, like what, what what other options are there really? We only have a limited number of takes. We have limited coverage. So there's a, there's a kind of a specific puzzle that you're working with. And I'm like, okay, these are the best decisions with what we have. And I'm very happy with it. I'm happy. And I've come to terms with that. And I'm like, okay, great. I'm happy with it. Let's, let's call it, let's call it done. And let's, let's watch it together as a team. Now, that's one moment in time when I come to terms with that and then time continues from there, from there on. Mm -hmm. And then the fear becomes, um, what if I've spent a year and a half working on this thing <laughs> where the, let's just, let's just like the, the, the heightened fear of what if everybody that watches it thinks like oh the decisions you made were bad or you know you could have you could have done you like there's opportunity here that you didn't seize sure but you have to ask yourself why do those opinions matter more than the actual team saying, that put I'm it not, together i'm not saying they matter why do they matter at all i'm just saying that those are things i'm not okay i'm, I'm <laughs> it, those things come in and i have to process it whether it what how much it affects me of course is 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 a uh, 
you know, I have, I have some control over how much it affects. But it's interesting still getting that in, whether or not I let it affect me or not. It's still, it's like, okay, is there some... Because as a director, there's you don't really get notes very often as a director. So this is kind of like the opportunity for notes getting. It's like, oh, well, I got confused at this point. I'm like, okay, well, like, well, let's, why did they get confused? I'm sure that maybe, maybe, maybe this, maybe that, or maybe that was just one person that just maybe looked away for a bit or looked at their phone. They looked back up and they didn't know what was going. I don't know, whatever. Who knows? <clears throat> So I guess my fear is that I could, I don't know, I just, I'm just like, I'm like, could I have done better? Of course you could have done better, Eddie. <laughs> if you had like a million dollars and a, like, of course, I could have done better. Well, you could have okay, done better. Okay, the question is, for next time, how could I, how could I do better next time? It's kind of the lessons you take it's, away. These are just the things you learn and you grow. Yes, and it's, it's hard and it hurts. It doesn't need to. <laughs> It doesn't have to be like painful. It's, it can be good. It's a lot of work. I know, but you can <laughs> see a massive difference between it's what's on the inside and Shama days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Watching those back to back, if you wanted to do that little mind boggle to yourself, I mean. Yeah, they're different. They're different levels for sure. Yeah. And so, yeah, you could have done better with it's what's on the inside. And then you did better with Chama Days. And the next film that you write and direct, what? Sure. Okay, yes. What? You... <laughs> what do you not like about what is being no, said no, right no. now? No, no, no. I guess, I guess the self-consciousness comes in on how much time I spend doing the job of directing. So there's there's some self-consciousness in the post-production process for me where I'm not I'm not giving enough of myself to the process. And maybe I'm like, maybe, maybe I should give more to the... Maybe I didn't. Kind of sounds like you're gaslighting yourself, dog. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. It kind of just sounds like you're okay. sitting there being like, mm, "You could have done better." I'm like, Ugh. you literally put your heart and soul and back into that film. Like, I don't know how to tell you. Okay. You could like, the only things that could have made that film better are external factors you had quite literally no control of yet. <clears throat> yes. Maybe identify one thing that you weren't in love with in Chama Days, and really focus on nailing that in the next film. Could be pacing, could be themes, could be vi- like you could find one thing to focus on instead of looking at the whole and being like, "Oh no, ah, no, 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 for sure, yes." No, I don't like that. So I guess okay, just to maybe close close off close off this 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 loop here. <laughs> um, my thought, just to, I guess to clarify for those that are that are listening in on my therapy here. Chama Days was made for essentially, we'll call it little to no money. And sometimes when people watch a movie, uh, like like if a friend, uh, somebody not associated with the project comes in, they, they don't know anything about the movie, and you watch a movie, you're assuming that movie was made with the same money that all those other movies you watch are made. And then they get, so then when they're watching it, they're like, oh, why like it's it's like well you know (laughs) did you see this tweet this is on brand where someone was like and you wonder why like indie films night scenes don't look as good as full studio scenes and then it showed just a behind the scenes shot of the set of nope where they had this massive overhead light and these massive floodlights Mm -hmm. from all Mm -hmm. angles you can't get that unless you've got millions of dollars buddy the budget doesn't matter it does a little bit but you just said it. Chama Days was made on little to no money, and it still came out amazing. Yeah, like it looks good. So, cool it. No, I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> Stop disrespecting our baby. All I'm saying is that it's nice to know in my in my own processing as a director is like I I I'm confident at the end of the day that we did the best we could with what we which had. we did. Yes. So so essentially, next time for like Chama Days two, for instance. We can do the best we can with more at our disposal and more time and, you know, more days with Ansley on set and all that, you know, all the above. I'm not going to say I was the highlight (laughs) of the whole shoot, but I'm (laughs) going to get it. I think it was, I got there and everyone just kind of described it as, Jesus, it's not going to be quiet again or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) I think somebody probably did say that. Well, I know that when we went, when after I had left, you guys went back to reshoot at the gift shop and I think Jim. Jim Jim was our gift shop guy. He was like. Where'd that girl go? They were like, 
oh, she left yesterday. And he's like, damn, she was a trip. (laughs) (laughs) Sweet. Sounds about right. Yes, it does. Left. Yep. Yep. That's how, that's, that's what you do. She's gone with the wind. Great. (sighs) All right. Um. To jump straight from that into, uh, I know, okay, I'll segue. One thing that I was working on recently as well, I I think I wrapped on a on a feature that I was script supervising for, and then I, I like wrapped and I had some time, so I spent some time taking some podcast clips. Make sure you check the YouTube channel. Make sure you check. I launched a I launched a TikTok. <laughs> Following my advice, <laughs> might I add. And I put a lot of work into uh, you know compiling a nice little library of, of clips. And I'm kind of like out, I'm out of clips now. I'm out of clip. Got to put more work. That all being said, was I chose one clip out of your episode where we're talking about relationship oh, stuff, funny. and and then I posted that to TikTok. And it's a little bit outdated. It's a bit outdated. The the we were talking about um, fears in in relationship and maybe and maybe why maybe why we were single at that time. Um, and you commented that this needs an update. So here yes. we are. The first, let's let's contextualize maybe what we said in that other one. I I was talking about. Um... The fact that I don't think I could ever find a partner because I get bored too easy and I don't think there's anyone who's up to my speed. Um, Because I apparently think I'm God's gift to the earth is what I got from watching that clip back. But also, (laughs) also we kind of came to the conclusion that when it comes to our careers versus romance, there's something that definitely takes precedence there. And it's still the same for me. It is still my career. And I, I don't know. About you. Yeah, yeah, I don't. But that's I, where I was. Yes, what I was trying to say was, yeah, that my fear at work, being that being that I have been so hyper focused on filmmaking since I moved to Los Angeles, the fear was like I don't like I feel like I'm ready for a relationship, but then I, I fear that if I am in a relationship, that I I won't know how to turn off the the work priority, even though I. And consciously, I want I want to give priority to my partner. You don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't. Okay, need to. okay. Forget forget what I said about turning off my work priority. Let me talk about turning on the priority for somebody else that isn't me. You don't need to. I I don't know how else to break this down for you, but it just for me it genuinely feels. From my perspective <laughs> sure, sure. and my recent experience is um, these are not things you have to try on. You just find out how naturally good or bad you are at them. And you learn within the relationship and within communicating and being honest with yourself of where you need to show up for the other person. And it's okay that since you probably haven't been in a relationship in a, a minute, I'm going to say. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um it's okay for you to have to relearn that because I certainly did. I mean, the last time I was dating someone seriously, I was I was 18 years old and I just got my heart shattered and I was cheated on a bunch of times. So I was like, like how, how do I, one, trust again, two, prioritize this person without becoming codependent. It's a learning okay. curve and you got to be honest with yourself. And you worry that you're not going to be able to prioritize them. And that is okay. Because guess what? The whole fun with dating is that it doesn't need to be all or nothing. That is the one thing that has talked me off the proverbial ledge with my current relationship. I'm like, he's not proposing. We're not married. We're not having kids. We're not moving in together. It's allowed to just be fun. And it's allowed to just be. It can be. And you can still work your ass off. It's the first time I've swore this podcast. Dang it. I was trying so hard. <laughs> Did that make sense or did I just speak for you again? <clears throat> okay, I mean, it feels like it was a little bit contradictory. I, Go on. Because you said that you don't have to prioritize the other person, but then you followed, I said that you you followed you up to. with said you learn how to prioritize the other well, person. Because you're approaching it as if it's something that you need to turn on. It's not something you turn on. It's something you just it's find a wor- yourself. It's a work in progress. Yes. yes. And you find so, yourself like wanting to do it and then it's like, 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. So you're you what you're you're what? Jeez. What you and what? when you and you when you go <laughs> over there and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you're saying is is Eddie. Yes, that is a, a you know an idealistic goal that you want to achieve in a relationship. Right? Is, is that that is agreed upon? That. But you don't have to get there immediately. You have time. Is that is that what you're is that what you're saying? That That's is correct. Okay. You're getting a little too clinical with a <laughs> hypothetical relationship <laughs> that you're not even in yet. I'm just clarifying. <laughs> what do you want to have? Like a timetable? You want to schedule in? Like, okay, this time is when we'll sit and talk about our deep feelings. You know, you know I'm a planner. But I know you're a planner, and that's why <laughs> that's why you need to sh- sh- quiet it for sometimes. But and that's why I went to New York City. <gasps> But before New we jump York? into that, okay. but jump before we jump into that, I'm retracting my New York. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna break into full Broadway for, for number good, for good reason too. Right? For, yeah, please, um, don't. Uh, <laughs> Sounds just like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about you. Favorite subject? How? Um, for for as much as you want to share with the world. <clears throat> How did you overcome your fears? With dating? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, it's so hard. It's so hard. I find it funny. And I'll just I'll just be transparent here because I quite literally don't care. Uh, my boyfriend, what were you going to say? I was going to say you do care and you're open with all of our all of our friends. Here. Okay. I contradict myself. This is what my acting coach points out. He's like, do you notice how much you contradict yourself? And I'm like. No, I don't. It's because I'm actually very insecure and I don't know how to balance that. I, I speak with confidence and then I retract it immediately. Point being, um, I have the most patient boyfriend in the world. And I don't, I, I just, I found the one person on the planet that it, like I, I quite, I said, <laughs> so when I met him, I told myself he doesn't stand a chance because I knew he was into me. It's like, no, not interested. And then of course, like one thing kind of leads to another and I'm like, okay, I enjoy spending time with this person. And we broke up several times because of me. I broke up with him. We were broken up for like five months at one point and then recently got back together. Um, so that was an interesting curveball because I, I, you know, we broke up, I was dating someone else. And then in that time period, I was like, I feel very odd with the fact that I felt at home with the person I broke up with. And I felt that I could be myself with him and I could be all of the scary, awful things that I felt I was. And he ne- he was never scared, which is what I said in the last podcast. I need someone who's not scared of me. And he, in turn, kind of made it a space for me to explore what a relationship looks like. Because I don't know what healthy relationships look like. I've never seen one. So I'm like pulling at straws here being like, crap. Like, I did that wrong. I messed this up. I, I fought with him again. I, I caused a fight. I caused this. I caused this. And... When it just came down to it, I had to tell myself, like, Ansley, it's okay. You don't have to be good at this. You just know that you like him. And you care about him. We love each other. And that is all that matters. And the rest of the stuff we will figure out. And if it comes to a place when we're not taking care of each other and it doesn't feel good anymore, we'll address that then. But I don't need to think about it now. And so I had to, I constantly have to fight my brain and be like, shut up. It's fine. It's okay. You love this person. He loves you. It's all you need. That is what you need. So yeah. Did that make sense? Yeah. Uh, you did a great summary. <laughs> 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 yes, it made sense. It was a, it was a great sum of, of the journey. Um, so I didn't answer the question. So, I mean, is what you you kind of answered the question. Kind of. You, uh, it was... Allow me, allow me to, um, it takes a lot of honesty with myself and like sitting by myself and talking to myself and then also including him in those thoughts and being like, I'm struggling today. I need reassurance today. I'm sorry. I feel insecure today. Like it it just takes me being actually very honest and him understanding that I have trust issues and I'm kind of like a skittish dog and he goes above and beyond to be like, you don't have to worry about me. And I'm like, I don't want you to have to do this. Mm -hmm. So it's Mm -hmm. just like, it is such a struggle because nobody wants to be that person that needs constant reassurance, but I'm aware and he's aware and it is fine. It's fine. He loves me. I love him. That's literally all that matters. That's great. Cool. That's great. 
Let's watch over a dog. It's my screensaver. Look at that. Wasn't that cute? That was yesterday. I'm looking at a screensaver right now. It's a silhouette on the beach. I thought it was so cute. My friend's like, do you want a photo? I was like, kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of, please. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So I feel like that was, I feel like I just don't know how to answer questions without <gasps> rambling. No, it's great. I hope okay. they make sense. Okay. The well, live audience seems very engaged still. Well, so. Yes, yes. Well, congratulations Thank on, you. on finding love. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> it's gross. Like, it actually is gross, but it's fine. No, it's lovely. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like um, there's different pillars in life. Mm-hmm. Work pillar, family pillar, relationship pillar. I mean, you try to build up stable pillar. Is, is it f- the work? Yeah, like financial work, money, family, and then and partner. Yes. Those are the, th- the three pillars of life. Is, is that like a book? Or, probably... I feel like hobbies maybe might also be a pillar. The hobby Passions? pillar? <laughs> <laughs> the hobby pillar? Oh, I don't know, Eddie. What the fuck is the... Dear. What is the point? If, if all you do is work and you fall in love and then you don't have fun... What? You just go, what do you, you want? Rock okay, climb. Okay, sure. Have a hob. I don't think that's a Pick pillar. Pick I don't think it's a pillar, It needs though. to be a pillar. Feed your soul. The, the hobby is... is hobby by, is pillar. It's by design. Hobby, uh, work, family, love, hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> the four pillars. The four, the four pillars of life. You must have hobby. God said it in the Bible. <laughs> Revelation 666. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> All right. It's like it comes so close to being like not inappropriate, and then I just blew it out the window. Yeah, it's okay. Well, we're we're gone now, so it's over. Okay, so the pillars. So let's talk about you. Yes. <laughs> I'll just keep bringing that because I know it pulls you in every time I say it. What? Because I looked at my phone. I got a text message. No, okay. that's all good. Pulls you in. I am a covert narcissist. So I was gonna switch from the relationship pillar to talking about. The work pillar, because that's been a whole adventure for you oh as of late. <laughs> and I think it'd be fun to to hear about the latest and greatest. So I'm a server. Um, I'm at a restaurant 10 minutes away from my apartment. I walk there because there's no parking. And uh, first day I get there, it's an Irish restaurant, and it's actually owned by all Irish people. And so... Um, First day of getting there, I'm training as a host, and they're like, you're going to be working with... Why'd you scoot away from me? Am I getting too close to you? Oh, you wanted to... I was like, sorry, was I too aggressive? I was trying to get our legs. Our legs to be... All right. Uh Anyway, um, so first day there, and I walk in, they're like, you're going to be working with John today. And I come from a bougie country club serving background, so I'm not used to... You know, I, I'm used to decorum and, and, and fancy uniforms and yes, sir. Thank you, sir. How else can I help you today, miss? And just like complete and utter ass kissing. Uh, and so I walk into this restaurant. I'm kind of expecting the same thing. And then the manager walks in and goes, you honestly? Great. Let's get feckin' started. Like full Irish. She's like so aggressive. Loved it. I, I was like, wow, <laughs> wow, this is fun. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it's just, it's fun because he's like, I really don't care about the food or the drink because it'll be good regardless. I care that they have a good time. And I'm like, this is nice. And they take care of their workers. It's amazing. Um, And they treat us well. It's amazing. And they have enough staff. It's amazing. Uh, A lot of confusion here. I know. I literally was like. What's the catch? I know. I'm I'm genuinely like, hmm. All right. And I get tipped, which I didn't get tipped at my last job. So that's what I'm excited about. So that's currently what I'm doing, but I don't know how often I get to do that. And I'm really poor right now. So um, I am going to have to get a second, possibly a third job. So I might be possible. It's a lot right now. Like I had to ask my parents for help with rent for the first time mm-hmm, mm-hmm. ever. It happens. <laughs> so bad. It happens. It's, it's really bad. Los Angeles is uh, famously... Uh, the most expensive city in the entire country. Awesome. So. That's awesome to know. Uh, New York. But it's I also, New York. like, I applied for another fit modeling gig somewhere else because it was on Indeed, and I was like, I need something, and all I have to do is stand there and try on clothes, and they pay you more than they pay you in average jobs, so I might try to do that. My nanny on the side because I love working with kids, and I love hanging out with them. They're fun. So it's like there are a lot of things that I could be doing, and from the people that I've talked to, it, it, it kind of seems like that might be the best – 
that for me because I do like to live a bit more sporadically and I kind of was killing myself with the monotonous show up every single day work eight and a half hours see the same exact people have the same exact interactions it was kind of just driving me to insanity um so I'm excited to I, it's like weird because I am in a very insecure spot and I've never been this insecure financially work life related n- never the work pillar the work pillar is quite literally in shambles um and so that's hard it's really really hard because I don't like this but I'm trying to take this as opportunity and just like see what I can do with actually being uncomfortable because I haven't been uncomfortable in a minute and that's when I kind of do the best and then what was the other when you're job hunting initially there was that Uh limbo phase with no with no job prior to landing this job like you had you had some sporadic work here and there but like yes how how did uh so okay okay well in that because i i applied to like 40 50 like 40 to 50 jobs in the time that i got back from traveling europe which is why i'm so poor now um i i i applied to so many jobs and I wanted to kind of reach and see if I could get hired in a job that would set me up for kind of a career path afterwards because I have childcare experience and food service experience and unless you want a career in that which I do not like there's only so far you can go with working those like I don't want to say teenage jobs but that's kind of how I equate it to because that's what I've been doing since I was a teen and so for me I wanted to find like copy editor copywriter position so I was looking into all of those jobs and social media creators and content creators and social media uh, analysts for certain things. And so I tried my hand in applying for a lot of things and I submitted my portfolio and just got kind of shot down left and right. And it was just like, unless you know somebody to get you in the door, you're, it's not going to open for you, which is extremely frustrating. And then also you have to deal with the, um, parental aspect of it where, um, my mom is consistently like, you were such a talented writer. Like, why'd you choose acting? Like you're such a talented writer. And so I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll try it. And then you just keep getting rejected from it. And it's like, why am I doing this? I get enough rejection as an actor. I really don't need it. I don't want to get rejected for my hobby now. I don't. <laughs> 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 my hobby pillar is also in shambles. <laughs> and so I just kind of said, you know what, screw it. But I, I was not getting a single interview out of all the jobs I applied to. And I applied to a plethora. And I did not get a single interview. And then I brought in my resume to the restaurant in my neighborhood. I was like, hi. Hey, and they were like, great, we'll call you. And that's how I got That's how I got it. They said, like, great as in we'll take you, we'll call you? Or great as in you're, we're, yeah. we're actually going to consider you? We're not, actually considering. Not like, great, thanks for this. We'll, we'll, no, we'll no, no. It you. was definitely like, and also it's like kind of a family style. Like everybody there knows each other. And I had went to my usual Irish pub and he was like, no, I'm sorry, we're not hiring. Try this restaurant. They're good people there. And I said, okay. So I w- walked my happy little butt over and I handed it in. And they called me the next day and I showed up, did my interview. And then they called me a few days later. And they're like, great, we want to get you started. And I was like, word. I, So, yeah. But literally, it was so funny because of all the online jobs I applied to, the, the one that I do old school is the one I get. Lessons. Lessons. You know, and that doesn't mean I have to stop looking for those writer positions. Like, I don't. I don't need to just get complacent. And I think that's my issue is I oh. get complacent when I get comfortable. Yeah. I mean, you're, it sounds like, you know, three jobs. Um, did you? Oh, and I work a catering job too. Oh, yeah. I do catering now. That's why you missed my birthday party. That is why I'm, oh, and just central casting just asked if I was available. So we'll see if I can do that too. Background work. Okay. It just anything. So. Work. Not, not to put you on the spot here. Yes. Did you, the Instagram message, I was like, hey, this casting director is looking for, did, did you see that one? I think Can, it was a, I think, didn't I respond to it? I don't think, did you? I don't think you did. I'm not going to check right now. I, I definitely saw it, but I think that was when I was in limbo to be like a full-time nanny for this thing that didn't work out. And then also I was in between finding out if I was going to get hired in my restaurant job. And so I was just like, okay, I'm just going to. It just stressed me out, honestly, to think about it. Because I don't have any assistant work on my resume. So I don't know. But so the job, <laughs> to cl- yeah, it was, it's like a casting director assistant. So <clears throat> I think what they were looking for was somebody, is, and like I think I mentioned it to you too. I was like, I think this is a, um, I almost think it's like a work from home flexible thing too. Like you don't have to be in an office to work it. How do I? I... And you get to help a casting director sort it through talent and, and, and that sort of. So you're kind of like still industry, 
but you're kind of but then you're also semi on call oh so i think it was a oh, story took too and by long? the time i got yeah it might have been gone oh shucks i'll have to resend it to you let me swing by and say hi because i know uh friend of the podcast who that's what you said oh yeah yeah you see you can always check out her episode too <laughs> Either way, I was just curious about that because I saw that pop up and I thought of you. That's very kind of you. I will say, though, a lot of my friends kind of knew I was struggling in my situation and they um, really showed up for me and sent me a bunch of job opportunities that none of them really ended up working out. But I I will say I'm very grateful to have a decent community of people around me that were like, hey, if you really need something, I gotcha. Mm -hmm. So that was kind because I was really struggling. Really going through it. Yeah. So anyway, I'll look into it. Work you know. pillar. Work pillar is in shambles. How was New York? So I went to New York City. I've for, never been. For the first time. And this was a trip that I had. I, I don't know if, I don't know if we had talked about it before at all, but um, traveling was something that I kind of wanted to, exp- this is my, dumb, I was going to say experiment more <laughs> within my life <laughs> as a, uh, like I wanted to go somewhere without the full strict plan that we we semi joked about like how I normally live life is like okay I'll plan the trip right and I'll have I'll ask for suggestions on things to do but I don't really want to go with a with an itinerary of like this day this day this day this day right. just show up walk around see stuff and do that that thing so I went to New New York City cuz I have a cousin out there that I could stay with so I had a a place to stay and it was not. How many cousins do you have? My family is uh, muy. Uh, muy largo? Muy, <laughs> muy grande? Muy grande, por favor. Very big, please. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, am bilingual. <laughs> um. Yeah, I have a lot of cousins. My, as as you recall from the trauma experience. Yes. Uh, my the house that we stayed in was owned by my great grandfather. They had they had like ten, ten, eleven kids. I don't know. They had a lot of kids. So in that tiny just, house, just on my dad's side alone, that's a big like tree of yeah. In that tiny, yeah, it's you your house tiny. I'm sorry. Well, man. the house was for okay. for ten kids. I yeah. mean, it All was right. three bedroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the the parents' rude. room and the boys' room and the girls' room. Okay. You have four boys here and four girls here and the parents here in one bathroom. And you you just do it. Good luck. So this cousin in New York, same situation? Just a bunch of people living in the... So he... Uh, no, but no, he's a, he's, he's a descendant of, of, that, of, that. Of, that, of, of that. Yeah. So he's a second cousin, technically, of mine. Regardless, he's, uh, he, you know, um, shout out. To to Stephen. Stephen. Hey Stephen. Um, hey Stephen. Got to stay with him. He was he lives in Manhattan, so the main the main island. Uh, Stephen, where, what do you do for work, buddy? Uh, they yeah, him and his partner are are well. They do they do well for themselves. So Sounds it was nice. I had my own good. I had my own guest bedroom to stay in, and uh, I kind of yeah. So it was it was a nice it was a nice home base. And I don't know, what do you want to hear about New York? What's well, your... What did you, okay, I did... Yeah. I think I wrote a question on this. Uh, let me just find out in my little notes. Huh? So the question is normally, like, Eddie, what did you like most about New York City? No, uh, did New York broaden an artistic perspective for you? Oh, did you find any gross, inspiration? Gross, gross question. How is that a gross question? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ali. Uh, let's see. For, for me to be inspired artistically, I would have had to have been in work mode. So those two can't coincide <laughs> for you? I try. I guess I I made a lot of efforts to rest and not. To answer your question is I don't, I don't. That's okay. I don't think so. Good. I was not inspired artistically by New York City. All the New Yorkers (laughs) out there, like I'm sorry, never come back. The thing that I did, okay, my, I did enjoy. It felt very LA esque, and the thing that I like about Los Angeles is the people. Like the, there's a lot of creative people that are that are pursuing their crafts and they're so passionate about it and and working with these types of people are like the best and interacting with them and trying to grow with them and help each other out and all that kind of stuff is my is my favorite thing. So going to New York City and like 
walking around the city doing stuff. Like I was, I was solo. I went, so I soloed around the city a lot. Um, but I did plan a couple of coffees and dinners and podcasts and stuff out there. Um, and meeting up and hanging out with the people, <laughs> like New York City people that I knew was my favorite part. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the part that I love. This is the part. Oh my gosh, you're doing what here? This is the like this, like you can, you can pursue in New York too. I didn't know. <laughs> you can pursue no, I, I, in New York? Like film and television is yeah. also, yeah. I, I mean, I knew that. I knew that, but I didn't appreciate the city until I met the people who also were film people. I was kind of, I don't know. Was... No, I think you have to find a way to relate yourself into his, I mean, that's my thing is I got to find a way to relate to it in order to like fully appreciate it. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, that's what I did eventually. Glad. It was just, I didn't feel grounded in the city until I was like, okay, this is how, this is how, yeah, whatever you said there. <laughs> um. Okay, so no inspiration, so, no new screenplays that came to you because you were able to just kind of sink your teeth in. No, I to New I, York. I enjoyed the social, uh, just the human, the human element of just existing. That's important as well. Just existing, and then seeing how you get funneled into little little, little subway cards, little subway carts, and it's a different world over there, is it? It's a little different. Hmm. It was it was nice, and it was also not nice. Yeah. Like I, it was a plus and also minus at the same time. It was like Never I like been. this, but I, I, it's you know, at a to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. It was it was nice, like being in a cart and it being packed, and you're walking around, and there's just all walks of life, and everybody is just like sardines in there. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> as a as a guy. <clears throat> um. <laughs> Yeah, there wasn't always packed sardines, but there were kind of. Kind I just of like New York moments. is, and I, I I mean this in the most respectful way possible. It is one of the cities that genuinely scares me, and I, I was scared too. Don't think I I don't know. I just I, I say I don't think I would enjoy it, and everyone's like, "No, you gotta come down, you gotta try it." And I'm like, "No, <laughs> sorry." I felt the same. Okay, so I'm just a coward. Is that what I'm hearing? Can you believe you just called me that? I'm so <laughs> fucked up. So I was worried about being overstimulated. I was worried about not knowing how to navigate the city. I was mm-hmm. worried about mm-hmm. being like trampled in the streets. So, mm-hmm. you know, all uh, like that was all scary to me. I was like, I don't even want to try the subway. Like, I'm not going to be able to figure it out. Like, uh, you know, I'm going to get like uh, what happens to like the rats and like all this, like all this stuff was was then it was very approachable and really easy to do <laughs> yeah that's kind of how it felt when i was in europe and i was like i don't understand anything and then it's just like in rome it was easy and then london the tube system is really confusing at first and then i got it and then edinburgh and, and stuff i mean it makes sense yeah we so, just uh, never so- don't do it because public transport in la is so poor there is not a possibility of and yeah then then and then of course I have to remind myself too that the world is designed like those big cities are designed to be approachable to everybody. Like if everybody's got to be able to figure it out. So if, if, if so-and-so can do it. Right. (laughs) Then my pride would start talking and I'd be like, Oh, come on. Like if they, I can do it. It's like, Oh, everybody else has done it. I guess I can just, just do it. Yeah. It's just never been a city that spoke to me. So I've never really wanted to go. It's, it's all right. Yeah, I'll see. <laughs> New York City's all I'm right. I'm sure I'll end up there one day. I have friends there, so I'm just it's gonna yeah. happen one day. So let me throw out one thing that I did do there that I, I I'll I'll pitch to you as an experience. Maybe I'll see if if I can pitch it well. So I I tried this thing. So one I guess I saw a musical play. I saw a, f- a musical called Come From Away. There's my playbill. Wow. Um, Forget that. You, you, you're very familiar with theater, so I don't have to explain how musicals work or that it was a good musical. <laughs> You've never seen Broadway because you haven't been. Have you seen Broadway plays though? Have you it's done all Dirty Dancing off Broadway? But what about like bra like like I've a heard. like a touring Broadway play like those tour and stuff like? No. Okay. I saw Shrek the Musical in Austin, Texas. That was pretty good. Is that Broadway? No. It sounds fun. <laughs> it's just good. I've heard good things about Shrek. Oh, Lightning Thief! I did see Lightning Thief. Okay. It's an, it's it wasn't. It. Okay. Sorry. Anyway. No, yeah, that wasn't the point of my question. But sorry. <laughs> but it was a Broadway show that I saw, not on Broadway. 
Was that not your question? It was I, a traveling I did, I did, show. I did ask. I guess I, I unfortunately... Anyway, Suck at elaborating. What I was going to say was there's this mask here. If you want to bring that down for the people. Um, I went to a show called Sleep No More. People, you may, you may, you, it seems like a lot of people know about this show. I have uh, never heard of it. Ansley is demonstrating what wearing this mask looks like. Do you want to describe for the people that are just listening to the podcast what this mask looks like? Um... Yeah, so it's gray, and it looks like it has a really long chin, little petite little nose, big old eye holes, and some um, really caveman-esque brow bone structure. Yes. Yeah, oh, and high cheekbones, big yeah, old yeah, high cheekbones. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a little spooky. Um, so little, I went, so this experience is, it's like an immersive theater experience, and you as the audience, they give you these masks when you check in and you're told not to speak and you can, you can like wander well, you can, you can wander this multi-level hotel and they perform Macbeth. Uh, non-dialogue Macbeth. And you get to, and so it's a, it's a, it's a continuous experience where when you walk in, like you're released in little packs and then you can just like walk off and all the sets are built around the multi-level. So then you walk up and you see characters going through a scene and then the scene ends and one walks out of the room and one stays and you can follow the person off and see how their life continues from there. And then they go and interact with somebody else. So it's like an interwoven, like living. I Macbeth. would love to go see that. Sold. I'll go. Is that New York? That's New York. I'll city. go. I'll go. That sold me. That's all I need. <laughs> that sounds so cool. Our our, our mutual friend Spencer Whitesell uh, <gasps> highly recommended it to me. God, what a man! And I and I gave it a shot. I will take anything Spencer says and trust it with my whole gut. So I will go. Yes, he loved it. If Spencer will do it, I'll do it. He did it. He loved it, and he told me to do it. Spencer said to go to New York City and see a No Dialogue Macbeth play. So I went to New York City and saw a No Dialogue <laughs> Macbeth. Play. And I wore the mask. <sighs> Yeah, so I did that. That was all right. I don't know. That's New York City. That's cool. (laughs) (laughs) Great. How's this podcast going for you, buddy? I feel like we're doing good. I think we're doing good. Are we doing good? I don't know what it's like for you with other people. I don't know. You don't know? You've done 76 of these and you don't know? I don't know what I'm doing. That's all right. Okay. What I want to talk to you about, Ansley, uh, the question is, how, this is like a dumb, okay, how are you faring with the ease of attention online? Um, fine. I get, elaborate. Like, I will elaborate. The thing that prompted, okay, uh, let me, let me, okay. You are, uh, you exist online in the Instagram form. You exist online on the TikTok form. You also have a Twitter account um, that you post on occasion on. Um, those are the, those are the three pillars. <laughs> There's four pillars of you have, social you, media. You have, you have YouTube, YouTube as, well. as well, but I've seen. I've just started reposting my TikToks on YouTube because Roman was telling me about shorts and how there's yeah, you be have that you have that there. TikTok little emblem on it though, right? Like you're just ripping straight from TikTok. Yeah, yeah. I literally the, just reposted. The, I don't the, care. The algorithm will see it and not like it, but really because it's been doing me pretty good. They're doing okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just rumors I heard. They could do better <laughs> without it. Okay, uh huh. <laughs> just crop in a bit. Uh, yeah. I guess the ease of it, like, how do I take it? So, okay, here's, I'll elaborate further. Okay. If, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm elaborating further because you specifically, let's say TikTok, you're very, you're very venti on TikTok. You'll, you'll, it seems like you open up quite personally through your content there that I'll call. 
So you're open with the, you just, you just like, you, you, I don't know how you decide what to share and what not to share, but. Um, I ask myself if I would want people who don't like me having this information. And if the answer is no, I don't share it because they watch. And they'll use it. Yes. And so if I have many enemies, <laughs> I don't say that lightly. A lot of people don't like me. You know, Some what, have what very good are, reasons. Are, are, okay. Uh -huh. No, I, okay. I have yes. burned a lot of bridges in my life. Um, and those bridges remain currently on fire. And I know that there are people out there who watch me in hopes that I fail. And if there is something I wouldn't want them knowing, I don't share it. Simple. But, okay, I don't know. I, I just kind of talk. Right. I share stories that I know. I don't know. Because I don't even share, I feel like. I feel like I've gotten so in my head about it now. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you were you were sharing. Let's say, like for instance, the the limbo limbo phase of finding a finding a job. Like oh, you, I... you're, you're like, hey, everybody, I'm broke, and I'm looking for work, and this is annoying, and blah blah blah. And like, hey, everybody, update uh, the work thing. I went to this. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I'm keeping up with Ansley now. I guess now that I'm on TikTok. Yeah, it's it's so I go back and forth with that because I I quite I don't know how to share aspects of my life without then second guessing it so all those videos you just referenced are not public anymore like they're all private mm. so i post them for a bit of time and then i don't like the fact that people know that about me because it feels like so only the true fans get to yeah get to know. And then, yeah and then if you're not in the know you can't you're not in the know. look you can't yeah the it, topical stuff leaves it, i don't know i i, I wish i and this is kind of, I got in like a huge fight with my mom about my social media presence because she just doesn't like it or get it. And she said some really harsh things to me about it. And I was like, cool, thanks, Lynn. So now I'm kind of looking at it and I don't really know what to do with it because I don't know if it's helping me or hindering me. And I don't know if my presence on the internet negatively affects me. I don't know if my swearing affects me on the internet. I don't know. I don't know. And I'm trying to find the fun and joy in it again because it's what it's supposed to be. I've never wanted to look at it like a business and I've never wanted to look at it like, but I should be. It's so confusing. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know, just, just to throw this in there really quick. I feel like you do a great job of presenting yourself as yourself. Like that's kind of... That's kind of that's kind of like all you're doing, like you're saying is like, and I think that's that's what you have to, if you're thinking, I don't know, because you're not thinking about it this way, but you could also think about it this way. Is the right. Thing that, the and thing, the second the thing that, I start to be insincere with it, I'm like, oh, take it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay. I, I just, uh, that, that, that's not an answer to your question, okay. and I wish it were so better. I would just, let me just recontextualize again here for people that are less familiar with your TikTok or TikTok at all. So when you post something, I'm just gonna rattle off some some view counts that you. Oh, jeez, Louise. Ew, ew. <laughs> we gonna fuck up tonight. How do I find your? Uh, okay, I have you right here. Turn it down. I don't want. I did. Hear I turned it, it down. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, for instance, you you have you're nearing 200,000 people follow. I don't know what that means on TikTok. Or, Very little. Regardless, it's a big number. It's a cool number. Whatever. 200. Let's just take you know. There's 200 people. 200,000 people that follow you. Whatever that does to the algorithm. Whatever. When you post a video, it seems like your low end is getting you know 20, 20,000, 25,000 views on it. And then in the middle range, you're had, you're breaking a hundred. There's a six hundred, and then in the last month, you've had two that have broken two million views on the tick. Yes. Yeah, you have the hair one, the, and the fly hunter and, and one. The I know fl did and well. the fly one. Yeah. But otherwise, you post a video. It's gonna it's gonna rack up views. We, uh, whoever's seeing it, I don't know. It's, it could be inconsequential. Maybe there's sprinkling. There's you know there could be industry people following. Who knows? There are. I know there are. Um, but okay. So let me continue. So <laughs> so there you go. You have an instant audience right here mm -hmm. for if you wanted to like. There's there's that for whatever those numbers are worth. And then on I know on. Instagram specifically, you don't you don't use this one as as frequently 
at all. But the thing that really stood out to me <laughs> was, and I texted, I, I responded to the story I'm about this too. I forget what you're doing. You're doing like a, a you're like, I'm bored, uh, ask me questions. And then you had two posts in there where you teased launching <laughs> uh, an OnlyFans. An OnlyFans. Because pervy dudes got to fucking learn. Sorry. <laughs> so you had, so then in the story, you yeah you, you joked you had I a link how you, many people yeah clicked you, it. you addressed how many people clicked it and it was a decent number of like clicks five hundred people five hundred people clicked your OnlyFans even though even though you I think you even said like this this isn't real and people are still clicking it anyway and then you had another <clears throat> okay so I'm just in my head I'm thinking about you had more clicks on a link than I would normally get in. in even just reach <laughs> on stuff. So I'm like, okay, well that's like getting clicks is kind of the goal. Like getting somebody to click a thing is like social media like kind of goal. Yeah, people engaging with your content. Well, yeah, engaging is one thing, but having somebody click something to leave leave the platform is like the hardest right, thing to get a platform. But you to have do. to ask yourself why they were clicking it. They thought they were gonna get risque nude photos of me and unfortunately which is what i struggle with is half of my perception on the internet in real life etc is simply a sexual object to a lot of people so that's why it it yielded a high click link yes I but also people knew it was fake a lot of people knew it was going to be fake so that's also why they clicked it (laughs) yeah there's a combo for sure so either okay so does it how does so I'll ask the question again? How, how, why is it easy? How is it easy? How how are you faring with the ease? Um, I don't know, Eddie. That it's like I I hate it. Like I made my little TikTok account, the one that is almost nearing two hundred thousand, with the intention of just posting whatever I wanted. And then the second I got a substantial audience, I was like, "Great, now I'm in my head again. There's really nothing you can do about it. It's just the name of the game." I understand the fact that I'm going to be perceived regardless. I understand the fact that with my career path, it is good to be perceived, and it is good for people to have the opinion that I am being truthful and real and authentic, because that is what I strive to do. The issue with that is I don't necessarily love the thought of having to feel like I have to post or feel like I have to get a certain amount of views or likes because it'll happen where I post videos and TikTok usually hates me and will kind of banish my videos to the shadow realm. Like nobody sees a lot of them. And then when those don't get substantial views, I feel inadequate and I feel stupid. So then I private them and then I second guess my performances. And more often than not, I find myself scrolling through my TikTok to see what I can get rid of what I want to private and it's the same with Instagram it's the same anywhere because people will take and take and take from you what they want and see like the perception they get of me is now this idea of who I am in their heads and there's no room for wavering with that especially on TikTok it wants you to make the same content be the same person and unless you're in the top percentage of creators nobody really cares so I don't know. It's easy, but I hate that it's easy. And I understand a lot of people think that's crazy. Like when I told them I deleted my account that had half of a million followers, they're like, why'd you do that? It's crazy. And I'm like, because I hated it. I felt like it wasn't an accurate perception of me. And more importantly, I had that many followers. So people had a perception of what I was doing. And then that idea of what the followers were when my videos wouldn't even get to 10% of them, that makes me look weak and weird. And I didn't like it. So I got rid of it, started over. And I like Tiny Tabasco more because I feel that it is more truthful and I am engaging with people in the way that I would prefer. So I'm trying to find the balance there. I'm also trying to find the balance with crossing it over because I feel I don't mention my TikTok. I don't mention it. I don't bring it up. There's people I work with that find me and they're like, I didn't know. And I'm like, I know. (laughs) I didn't tell you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to find the way to intersect my Instagram and my TikTok because my Instagram has less followers, naturally, but it also has all the people I know in real life. And I don't like that. I don't like, like TikTok, it's easier because I don't know any of these people. Right. So if you wanted to post for the people that you know in real life. You, I get scared. You, yeah. You're like, well, now all the people that also don't know me are also seeing the same thing that I want only my friends to see kind of thing. Not even that, but I feel more comfortable sharing with strangers than I do with people I know. Oh, the other way around. Yes. Almost. I don't like 
Like I, I very rarely post my TikToks on my Instagram story unless it is with another friend and it's like a funny one. I don't post my rants. I don't post my stories. I don't post anything, anything. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. It's a very weird thing for me. Yeah. I know. I know on my end, like I almost felt, I'm like, I felt weird being on TikTok following you. I'm like, I don't think this is, this is, I don't think Anzi's making this for me to see, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm seeing it. And then I'm like, yeah. It's a weird balance thing. <laughs> I, I gotta gotta get out of my head with it because like whether I like it or not, my TikToks will be seen by people that know me in the real realm. Because people would, parents, adults would find it and send it to my parents and be like, "Can you believe your daughter's doing this?" I'm like, "Can you believe she's shooting flies with a?" Can with you a believe she uses profanity on the internet? And it's like, do you know what year it is? <laughs> I don't even get me started. This is like a whole debate I had. Ugh. So anyway, I'm like second guessing my entire thing. But again, I'm just going to keep doing it and hope I find the balance because I love interacting with people and I kind of love my audience sometimes and I love having inside jokes with them. And sometimes it's really worth it. It is just pressure. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. So it seems like you're faring pretty well. Yeah, it, it comes and goes, but I yeah. feel that's anything. It's good and it's bad and it's bad and it's good. Yeah, I've had a similar because I'm again my experiment has only been like a, a month in the in the works and I'm kind of through the TikTok experiment already because of my feed, my 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 content lump is out. But uh, yeah, my I was having a similar takeaway with like okay, I put like 30, 40 hours of work compiling all these edits. <laughs> and I'm I'm releasing them here, and I'm releasing them here, and I'm releasing them here, and like I know I've had I've had maybe I I had the Sabrina my first one did well, and I think that was kind of like the I almost felt like almost felt like the first one's free kind of thing is like here's to get your here's to get the drug going. <laughs> I don't know hers hers has popped off on all the on all of, on all of them because she's Cause a she's, powerhouse. She's just um she's so cool. She's just a lightning rod for uh trending. Yeah, um, quite. Yeah, I mean, she's amazing. So I know I've had like maybe out of thirty clips, I've had maybe two or three that have compiled any 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 like outlier view counts within the within the bunch. And then I'm like, all right, did this even did this did did this translate to more more listens or more views on the actual podcast too? Because it's it's highlighting conversations or little clips of conversations right. with guests. I'm like, is it doing anything for the podcast? And I think only Sabrina's brought people to the podcast. Like when hers spiked, there was like a small percentage that also came over to the podcast. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, is that worth 40 hours of work to get uh, an, uh, I don't know. It, it, well, are you only posting so that people come to the podcast? I don't even know why I'm posting. Well, you, <laughs> I think I think it's important to do it. Just because it shows that you have a presence and you put in the effort and the work. And even if it's not being received the best by audiences, because that's what happens with all the content I work really hard on, it doesn't get seen. It's the videos of me shooting a fly in the kitchen that blow up. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, that's just how it works. And it is infuriating. Infuriating. Oh, my God. Infuriating. And it's stupid. So. So, yes. So stick at it. Yeah, yeah. I guess I know I was having a similar, ex not existential crisis, but uh, in terms of like, okay, I'm not an actor. I'm not like, I'm. My goal is directing here, mm -hmm. Eddie. Do you need to be a personality as well? Like what? Like what? Like why? Like what? Or you know, what are the what are the clips? What? Okay, what is your what? I'm a firm believer that you don't need to be. Your work speaks for itself. The reason I'm a personality on the internet is because that's what speaks for my work. Oh, right, because people will tune in. Yeah, we want to. We want to watch you. Therefore, you're you're therefore putting yourself I'm a out there to watch. And, and therefore, yeah. people know I can hold audience engagement. Yeah. So then, for me, I'm like, okay. Well, I want. There are things that. Yeah. So I think for you, it speaks more to the fact that you can have this many people want to speak to you, to take time out of their day to come talk to you about mm -hmm, aspects mm -hmm. of life. That is important. That is very important. I love that part. Um, yeah. So, so it almost feels like I'm, I'm, I almost feel like I'm doing it in honor and thanks to the people that are coming out. I would guests. agree. That's kind of more of the point. I would like, agree. Is I want to showcase them. It also shows your amazing network. That's a huge thing. It's a huge <laughs> aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. So on my end, I was almost leaning the ups I mean, at the end of like, okay, Eddie, at the end of the year, almost like be one of those obscure directors that doesn't post anything and just focus on the on the work that people don't see on like the 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 meetings and the and designing your pitch decks and doing this and then and then and then just post less often and be a little bit more mysterious versus being so being being so uh that's kind of the thing I've been wrestling with which I which I may lean into and yeah. you know, we'll see we'll see it's like the same boat. I kind of don't want to put like I, I every single day I want to delete everything, but I'm like, wow. just stick it out, dog. But like I want to be mysterious. <laughs> I want to be quiet and mysterious. But I have such a big social footprint yeah, on the yeah. internet. If you Google my name, there's like ten different things that pop up, yeah. including our podcast. So it's just not a possibility. Yeah, that's weird because sometimes being mysterious can make one more attractive too which is kind of weird. it's like wait this actor wait this actor doesn't post anything why are they being considered they don't have any following whatsoever they've only been in one thing connections and... <laughs> nepotism <laughs> it's the only way i haven't thrown out that word in the whole podcast but i nepotism yeah <laughs> it is the industry this industry is built on the back of nepotism and i stand firmly in that well, you that know. is why connections like Sabrina are amazing, because she is just a literal powerhouse. And I mean, that girl, she's gonna break, break that. Yeah, she's she's stupor. working. Yeah. Shout out to Sabrina episode yep. something. You can look her up. I just gotta say, I have so much respect for people though that like constantly are finding ways to break into that circle. It's hard, and it is great because it makes it accessible for a lot of people when you have trailblazers like that who do that for us. So, uh, 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 I would like your darkest lager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a quote from a movie. It is. The tallest glass of your darkest Gosh. beer. I'd keep hitting the microphone on things. <laughs> Sorry. It was like the mask, my leg, my chin just now. It's, Genuine it's okay. apologies. The editor will handle all of that. Are you the editor? Yeah. Kay. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I, I do you have anything else that you prepared? I did have a question a that oh. I kind of got on the way in. Okay. Because I don't want to ask you about like future projects right now. Because obviously I kind of, I know there's one in the works. You already mentioned it in the beginning of the podcast. Just so you know. I didn't mention it was a future project in the works. You literally, okay. <laughs> um, no, so when I walked in and saw you reading, I didn't know you were literate. <laughs> I didn't know you, like, were a reader. And so that kind of that kind of asked me the question, because reading for me played such an influential role in wanting to do this career. So when you read, does that kind of help you develop ideas or get inspiration? And does that give you a peek into how you want to create characters? Uh, for me reading, so when I, I, I used to talk about this more on the podcast, but I don't really anymore. So I confess I only watched so my episode. It's all good. It's all good. So I started reading consistent, like as, as like a daily, as a daily goal thing. Like I, I, during the pandemic, I was like, I want to start, I want to, I want to be a person that reads. I do remember it. Yeah. So I maybe, maybe this. we did bring that up a little bit. So. I still have my daily, like, I just want to pick up the book and do some reading today. It's kind of how I think about it now. Before, I would do a 30-minute timer and try to at least hit that. But now that I'm in the flow, I can do it whenever. But when I read a book, I am I mostly lean towards the narratives and the fictions. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll sprinkle in an inf a more inf 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 informational read. But when I read it... I do pull more than anything else. It's like characters and like voices because when you when you go through different authors and everything and different characters, there's different ways they present. Like in the book I'm reading now, it's a, it's about a well, she's like a thirty something woman, but her personality is so different. The way she thinks is so so like I don't know. She has thoughts that pop into her head that like surprise me, and I'm like, wait. That's like that's a, this is a really fun thought. I could use that, or like, oh, I can design a character kind of like this because this is like a fun way. I've never I've never thought about a character like this at all. So it, it, it presents perspectives for me. 
that I don't think of on my own and, and you know, putting us in shoes. And that's like the whole re- thing about reading, right? It makes us more empathetic mm-hmm. is, the, is the, whole, the whole science behind it. So I'm striving to become as empathetic as, as possible here. So the more, Amazing. the more I read and the more I understand different walks of life and different, different, because this is, I think this takes place in like a, a European country too. So it's like a European perspective, a little bit different. Um, yeah. But I try to, I try to have a diverse group of authors and, and stories and uh, expand my own view in that comes back to my yeah subconsciously planting seeds in my own cool for writing cool yeah i think that's i I mean i love stories for that very reason takes you away and also gives you an idea reading has pulled me out of some of the darkest points in my life and i'm only 23 so not that many yeah many more to go i hate when people say that (laughs) I don't know. I just, it's, just the, I, it's the obvious thing to say when you frame it like that. I know. It's, it's I just know. A, your hand, your, it's a, it's it's a, a, a low hanging fruit. Yeah, yeah, alley oop. I just like, <laughs> Alan's like, no, my favorite is when, um, when I, I, I like, and this is a part of the sharing on TikTok thing. There was one time I was kind of sharing my mental state with my viewers, and these smart ass, obviously like grown men, just had to pipe in and be like, oh, it just gets worse. And I'm like, see, why are we okay with that? Like, and why do you think that that's an appropriate response to someone who's very obviously struggling? I just like, I, I, I hate the um, psyche behind kind of, I'm not saying you did this at all. I'm just breaking into it that I hate, I hate when people are like, well, yeah, well, imagine what I've been through. And it's like, for the love of God, I didn't ask. I was just sharing and it wasn't an opportunity for everyone else to be like, mm, well, you don't have it as hard as other people. I'm like, right, but I don't have it as good as other people either. So I can definitely complain if I fucking want. Sorry, another F bomb. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand you. It's uh, just like the empathy thing. People don't get it. You know, I'm not saying I have it awful. I'm not saying I have it great. I'm saying that in my life currently, there's a lot to complain it, it, about. Yeah, it's just a classic read the room scenario. Literally, right? it's, it's 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 like it's like, dude, it's obvious. It's obvious what I'm doing here. Can. You just, yeah. can you just... I just block them. I'm not I... kidding. Anyone that leaves a slightly irritating comment, I'm like, yeah, get out of here. Blocked. I, I do it so willy-nilly too. I don't even think about it at this point. Mm. People are like, that's stupid. I'm like, I don't care. Block. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm over here. Engage. I feel like I beg for less audience <laughs> attention. No, for sure. That's how it goes. Yeah. It's a fun thing. Okay. A little balancey balancey. So we are approaching October of the year 2022. October 1st hits. I'm watching Practical Magic. You've got your Halloween plans in store. What are you dressing up as this year? So this is the first Halloween I've had a boyfriend. Congrats. Thank you so much. That being said, is there are a couple costumes we're going to do. So if you've seen the animated show Invincible on Amazon I, I Prime. Have seen, I've seen clips. I'm going to be Adam Eve and Roman's going to be Invincible. And then he wants to be these characters from the X-Files. It's like Fox, Mulder, and Scully and Mulder. I don't, uh-huh. I don't know. But he's obsessed with them and I don't care. So one for you, one for him? Or I you're suppose both, or so. You're, They're you're... both kind of for him. But I like Adam Eve. So Okay. All right. If it were me, I'd just be a cute little witch. It's fun yeah, and easy. But you're that every year. I know, but I don't have money to get costumes. So I'm so, like. So he's footing the bill for these? No. Okay. He buys me all my food. I am not asking him <laughs> to also. <laughs> okay. What? It's great. I can't afford groceries, Eddie. He can buy all your food. He can buy your costume. Roman. No, my roommate, like, it's funny because she was talking about how she opens the fridge in the pantry and she's consistently concerned for my well-being. She's like, I'm sure he's feeding you, but my God, go to the store. And I'm like, I can't. I can't. I should show you my fridge. I don't think I want <laughs> to see it. Do you have a vision for what's in the fridge? I feel like a lot of applesauce. Oh. You strike me as an applesauce Ooh. guy. Ooh. I'm kidding. Probably like yogurt, some special cereal, eggs. It's better than that. I don't know. I don't want Is it organized? Do you organize your sure. fridge? I don't want to spoil it. Maybe. I... <laughs> anyway. Um... Do you want to entertain them while I go check real quick? <laughs> Do you want to go look? I'll yeah, be right back. Go for it. Go for it. <clears throat> so, 
Um, <laughs> let's see what she's finding. She's looking currently. <laughs> she's looking. Okay, great. All right, you're coming back. What, what did what did what did you find? So That's... I open Eddie's fridge expecting um, better, as he just described, and I see um, a tub of pasta, a Brita. And all the way in the bottom of the produce drawer, a single avocado. So I think maybe it's better in the freezer. It's not. It's a, it's a red onion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. And then I see uh, a half-eaten birthday cake, obviously, <laughs> from your birthday celebration. And I think some bags of ice. So what do you eat in a day? <laughs> like so, so the re- okay. The reason it was interesting. That's not even very The reason I, okay. Okay. The the Tupperware is also leftovers from the birthday party. So I brought that home. Uh, Jay- I kind of figured. So those aren't even supposed to be there. Like the normally, let's just say a normal routine is there's no Tupperware. Bi- oh, and a granola bar. A single granola <laughs> bar. <laughs> Sometimes I like them cold. In the fridge? <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> We went through a heat wave recently, and my stuff was like melting. So oh my god, kinda, my too. So, typically, I have one different Tupperware in there with my meal prep, and then the bags in the freezer are broccoli and spinach. Uh, so I have the red onion, the broccoli, the spinach, and some frozen turkey up in the thing. And I've got also, if you look at the opposite cabinet, I've got some black beans uh, ready to stew up as well. <laughs> delicious so i have one tupperware in my fridge at a time and then the the bars so if i say this because i love you and we're really good friends that is pathetic how so all my meals are taken care of i have food prepped for the next meal prep i have all my meals planned for uh for you the have next week four, what do you eat for breakfast I eat the same meal for both. What's breakfast? You eat the same meal all day? Uh, yeah, I eat, I, I eat the meal prep for, for at 11 a.m. And then I eat the meal prep at 7 p.m. And then if I get hungry, I'll have a, I'll have a bar. <laughs> you, you amaze me. Never and change. And that's, 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 uh, that's the Eddie diet. <laughs> So so I don't have any additionals whatsoever. I don't have any sauces. I don't Well, I have the hot one sauces. If I if I feel, I'm feeling a little 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 spicy. <laughs> but Do you eat out um, ever? How good are you at budgeting? I'm pretty good. That that's how I designed this meal prep plan. Was. How's your savings account? Just doing Right good. now I'm fine. Yeah. New York didn't break me, which is great. That's good. <clears throat> I have less than two hundred dollars to my name. <laughs> okay, great. I'm looking for work as well, but uh, I'm just trying to keep up the the consistent flow. I'm not. I'm not. It's not growing, but I'm. You know, I'm working on it. I'm at least. I'm. I got. I got some savings. Yeah. Either way, I don't know. I'm just selling my eggs again. Nice. And hoping that works out. I do enjoy helping families, but I also enjoy the uh, financial compensation. Yes. Great. Selling my body, Dad. <laughs> On that note. <clears throat> okay. Well, you kind of asked. Well, you didn't ask me about the. All right. To to kind of end this this current run of of our of our of our of our catch up show. Um, I mentioned being in October. I asked about the costumes, but I what I really wanted to ask was. I don't know the the fun question of of. Goals, ambitions, and expectations for the upcoming, whatever upcoming may be for yeah. you. Yep. Um, it's hard for me setting goals right now because I'm just constantly disappointed with myself. Um, so I don't know. I think to survive. It's a very low goal right now, but I would like Step to one, survive. I would like to yes, come out of October better than I am entering it. I would yeah, like to yeah, yeah. feel better. I would like to have a bit of a better base around me. I would like to finish a project. I would like to get a project. There's a lot I'd like to do in October, but I'm focusing on surviving. So 
that is a very big non-answer. That's great. No, sometimes you want to get back to basics and do the one step at a time, one yes. day at a time. Life is very hard right now, so I am just hoping to peruse through. Sounds great. You? I have essentially a month. I have a I have a feature film that I am first ADing Ooh. Back, in, back in Reno. What? Well, we'll call it Ta- We're shooting up in Tahoe. Who are you shooting with? It's a it's a outside production company that came, just happens to be shooting came in Tahoe? To Tahoe, and they found me because of an article featuring it. So it's on the inside in Reno, so they were like looking for filmmakers. That's awesome. So they came to me, of course. And, Naturally. Uh, yeah, I eventually, yeah, signed on as our first AD. That's so exciting. So, Congratulations. So I, yeah, thanks. So I have that lined up. I leave end of October for almost like a couple months, including pre-production plus the week off for Thanksgiving. I'll probably just stay up there. Do you know the story of the movie you're Yeah, working? I don't, yeah. It's, Do you like it? It's like, it's like a... It's kind of, it's a, do I like it? I'm, I'm doing logistics and scheduling. That was here. a trick question. You couldn't say no. <laughs> technically. I, can't, no, I love this. St- no, it's a, uh, the tricky thing is that the director, it's her first feature mm-hmm. and she's also one of the, like the main three lead actors as well. So I'm assuming that I'll also be tapping a little bit into director brain to kind of help assume. to kind of help with like all right while well, you're in the scene and you need some like somebody's got to direct you too or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I'll probably tap into that brain, the creative, but we'll see how much bandwidth I have. That's so when, exciting! Yeah. It's so awesome. You're going to be filming like back home. Like going from heat wave to frozen the tundra. tundra. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually kill to get to be in a movie that takes place in reno mm. that'd be fun yep that would be a nice full circle moment that sounds doable to me hop we'll on see. it buddy we'll see. yeah there aren't yeah it's got to be me i mean who else is who gonna else shoot who's gonna cast who, me who else, <laughs> <laughs> who else is gonna shoot in reno is what i was gonna say but <laughs> i think mine is a bit more appropriate <laughs> i don't yeah. know i don't know i don't know so what I was going to say is I have that lined up. So I essentially have like a month of like a, like no work currently. <gasps> so I'm like debating on what to do with my time here. I'm hoping stuff comes up. Stuff like I have a couple of limbo on my calendar for early uh, October there. Working with Zach King. Ugh, the pirate um, man. Yeah. If he does another pirate thing, Zach King. You know who to you call. You need an Anne Bonnie. Call me, dude. Right, right in and Bonnie, and then call you, or call you first and see if you're available, and you'll be. Like, I'll be available. Be like, I'll be free. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, sorry. I'll be available. Yep, ready to go. So I'm just, I'm just, uh, yeah. Where'd I? Yep. I feel like this really was just us talking and catching up. I don't think that there is anything to gain. From you're, this. you're. That'll be consumed. Heavily. I hope so. I, I'm i not going to lie. If, if our podcast gets zero views, zero listens, I'm, my feelings are going to be a little wounded. Sounds like they wouldn't if it's just for us. This I is know, just for but us. it's still like <clears throat> okay. if every other one does well. We'll get it. We'll I'd get like it. to have something. Okay. okay. We'll see what happens. Okay. Stop it, Ansley. We'll see what happens. Okay. We shall see. All right. Well, that being, I think, I think, I think, I think that's, that wraps it up. That's, that's the Sums show. Up. That's the show. That's the show. So where can, all right, just, just to throw out the tags one more, we haven't done it yet. Where can people find you? Uh, just... You can find me on TikTok at tiny underscore Tabasco. Tabasco is spelled with a T-O-B-A-S-C-O. Yes, it's spelled wrong on purpose. Uh, and then Ansley.Hutchinson. Instagram. I'm not telling you my Twitter. Uh, not telling you my Facebook, and uh, that's it. Great. Cool. All right. Uh, well, um, uh, where can sub- we find you, Eddie? Like and subscribe. Like and sub. Um, leave a comment if you made it this far. Or comment. T- uh, and then, <laughs> great. You can find me and the podcast available on wherever your podcasts are available. Spotify, Apple YouTube. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Watch the video version here on, on YouTube. Watch it because we look good. And then keep an eye out for a clip or two to pop up on, um, uh, on the tick or the inst. The tick or the but inst. For that, okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Mwah, goodbye. Oh, oh, oh.